I feel extra because my little bang didn't move it. <laughs> well, world, welcome to the show. I'm excited to have with me today again, none other than Dwight Allen O'Neill. Hi, hey everybody. Thank you for having me back. I feel like I have to say, hey, y'all, hey, 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 world, hey, world. All the way from California. It's so good having you. I'm having a ball having you here. Uh. It's been a blast, and the party's almost over, but I'm still here, so let's live and in the, the moment. And the fashion sense. I'm so, you I'm know, living. I had to living. bring a look for you. I, I had love to bring it. a look for you. Okay, so just for you, I thought about this, because we're just so high on energy when, when the both of us get together. So can we just talk about today's energy, guys? Roll it when you get it. I'm going to show you what today's energy <laughs> Me. <laughs> we are gonna run this race. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Okay. And we're gonna have a good time. Ooh, I'm gonna now get some imagine water. Mike Tyson coming on a dark alley looking like that. Girl, I beat out. Gone. Mm -hmm. But it's the it's the animal sound of it. It's the <gasps> if Mike Tyson was walking toward me, I'd run. I'm you just would? Saying. Yes. What? <laughs> You mm -hmm. wouldn't ask for an autograph? No. Mm -hmm. I'd be that one that talking about, Mike, hold on, let, can we get a picture? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, but it's all right. We are so glad you're here. We got so much ground to cover, so I'm ready to get into the breakdown. So this news is trending, unfortunately. An 81-year-old man shot and killed an Uber driver, and it was all a complete mistake. But was it really a mistake? So the 80-year-old man is called William Brock, is his name, and he murdered and killed 61-year-old Lolita Hall. Now, this was in plain daylight. We do have the video, so I'm going to ask that you use caution yeah. when you watch this, because the video is about to roll, and it is triggering. So this is Miss Lolita Hall going to the door of Mr. William Brock. Usually, you know, Uber doesn't go to the door, but here he comes out with a gun, broad daylight pointed at her because he claims he thought that she was there to scam him out of money. Now, not only is he walking her out the door, he walked her out the door, tried to take her phone from her, and then held on to her, didn't want to let her go. He shot her once, a scuffle ensued. He got a hit on his head. He shot her again. She tried to get away. A Third time, he shot and killed her in plain daylight. Now, apparently, like I said, he thought it was a scam because before she showed up, he got a phone call saying that a relative of his was being held at ransom. The story is just weird, but she was unarmed, okay? And as you can see, she was an older woman already struggling to walk. So is this a mistake or is this premeditated. I'm, I, it looks like hate. I got to call it what it is. I mean, I have to. First off, my thoughts goes out to her family. Absolutely. I, I can only imagine, you know, what they're going through. Um, and my black and brown people, if you are out there Uber driving or whatever it is, be safe because I'm so tired mm -hmm. of hearing things happen to us when we're doing it. My right. next thing is, why is there an 81 year old man with a gun? Like, why does he have a gun to begin with? America. Like, can we can we have an age restriction on guns already? America. Like, Kaka. why are you 81 years old, probably delusional mm -hmm. out your mind, clearly, even having a gun? Right. So this story is just is, is messed up all around. I have to agree with you. There is some hate there. Oof. Maybe he has some flashbacks of when we were marketing on Washington and it upset him a little bit because he assumed that Dr. Martin Luther King was at the block. But there is no excuse for this man to be having a gun and then shooting this woman not once, not twice, but three times. That's ridiculous. Wait, not at the block. Okay, so, but guess what? He is charged. Okay, so he's charged with possession of a firearm. Yes, he's he charged with murder. And he's also charged with kidnapping. I think for me, when I see this, what's really sad is the simple fact that she could hardly walk. She was not a threat in any way. If anything, he should be charged with more because he actually pursued her. Yeah. He didn't have to come out of his house yeah. with a gun. She was trying to like get away she, and yeah. go back. And he comes out with exactly look like the first gun ever made, but and shut at her. Like, what? are you serious? 
It did look like war to Look, it's <laughs> giving very cowboys pop, and Indians. Pop, pop. <laughs> like, that's what it sounds like. Pop. You know the pop. Oh, my god. But gosh. no, we're, we're not making fun of it. Please, definitely not. My condolences go out to the family because this could easily be an auntie. This can easily yeah. be an older person that's just she saying, hey, it's I'm just getting extra money. I'm just trying to make ends meet. It's during the day. Not thinking that she'll never come home. So this is disgusting. It's unfortunate. But we got to move on. Because talking about unfortunate, American Airlines. So we've heard that the airlines have been in the news so much. They're falling out the sky. The doors are opening. The wing is falling off. There are people being locked in the toilets till the flight lands. American Airlines is going through a lot, significant spike in problems and safety procedures when it comes to the airlines. Now, a letter went out to the American airline employees, and it stated that they knew they had issues, but they didn't want it to get to a point the same as United Airlines, because we know United Airlines has been in hot water the last couple months for their safety protocols. Now, I think when it comes to flying, we're seeing a lot go wrong. It's just not American Airlines for me. Yeah, it's honestly all airlines. Like, I remember when, what was it, Southwest, like a couple years ago, like mm -hmm. all the flights were canceled and they were talking about their, um, the, their systems were just ancient. <laughs> Other airline systems are ancient too. They're not doing updates. No. Yet we continue to pay these outrageous prices for airline tickets. Like, where is the money? America, where are y'all putting y'all money? That's my question. Because I know how much my flight costs. And have right. you ever like sat there and then you add up how many seats are, and you add up what you spend and average everyone else? You're like, this flight probably made a million dollars. This one flight. Yet Wait. I'm seeing things like this. That's, that's sad, it's sad. It's sad, but here's what, here's what really gets me. So you have American Airlines, right? They are a Fortune 500 company. They make a lot of money. You have Delta Airlines that's making a lot of money. And you have United Airlines that's making a lot of money. Little old Frontier Airline, where you got to have your own toilet tissue, mm -hmm. is not falling out the sky. Right. Snakes on a plane is still doing well. So it's something to say. No, you're right. <laughs> it's something to say about that little bucket seat that make you just sit up straight. Yeah. Because that flight gets you from A to B. It's all the higher flights, yeah. the upper companies that are just falling flat. And the girls be like, oh, I'm not flying Frontier. Why not? Frontier is safe. Oh, I'm going to fly now. <laughs> I may sit up the whole flight like this. Biden going to be on Frontier next. But <laughs> Air Force. I don't need Air Force One. Get me on Frontier. <laughs> he can't sit in that seat. He need his walk up. He got to have space, child, to get around. But we got we to move, move on. So California Valley Victorian, I feel so bad. So the school has yanked her completely saying that they don't want her to no longer give her speech due to safety precautions. Now, we already know the conflict between Israel and Hamas, but Miss, uh, Miss Young Girl here, I, I just don't even know what to I feel bad for her because I saw her. She did an interview this morning, um, and it was with one of the outlets, and I do agree with her when she said her freedom of speech is literally being taken away from her. I don't think it's her feelings about Gaza, even though they're very strong and she puts it all over her social media. Let her be the one to decide that safety. She's the one that has to deliver that speech. I don't think they should have taken it from her. I don't know. I kind of have to disagree with you on this one. Really? Uh, my reason is, is safety. Like, I'm all for freedom of speech. Right. But, like, if you're going to have freedom of speech, you have to understand there are consequences that come along with that. Right. So, in this case, if right. it's putting her at risk and other people at risk, because we know we have crazy people out there, yeah. January 6th, Hello, hi. Yeah. It's people out there that are not using their brain. So right. unfortunately, I mean, I'm for you for, you know, speaking your freedom, mm -hmm. speaking what you believe in, using your social media platform. However, like, it comes with consequences. And ultimately, we want to keep you safe, sis. It is what it is. Yeah, the thing about it is when she had to, she actually spoke and she said, you know, they already predetermined the fact of they thought she was going to speak hate. And she wasn't. She was spreading a message of love. When it comes to Valley Victorian, that is something that these students work very, very hard for all year long, especially being a minority from another country. She already 
went through discrimination. She already went through all the hate. She lasted that long to make it to that place, to that podium. I think she deserves to speak. We have Unabombers everywhere. We have people walking on campuses with guns. It's not going to make a difference. I don't. I say don't take it from her just because we don't necessarily agree with her stance. Then record it. Record it and air it at the graduation. Go live on Instagram, sis. You'll don't be fine. Don't take her. Don't. I don't know. Don't take her from. I feel like she worked too hard. But what about her safety, though? But let her determine that. If she's willing to take that risk to well, stand up. Well, what about my safety? Up, I'm at the graduation sitting on the front row. Well, they, you don't you go know. there. You Skype in. Period. <laughs> <laughs> I Since work hard, <laughs> too. But Since I work I hard for my paper. No, if you worried about your safety, you tell you and your family to stay home. <laughs> Let Ms. Valor Victoria speak. She came into this country. She had to face discrimination. She had to face hate. We don't know how much she had to go through to even get from class A to class B. And she made it, and she can go back home to her family. Nah, you Skype in with your people. You live here. She be fine. Let that lady, let her speak. Some people are for it, some people are against it, but I think when you work so hard, <laughs> whatever. I think when you work so hard, <laughs> I think when you work so hard, you know what I mean, to make a name for yourself, and then it's just taken away from you. I, I feel like it was just done way too prematurely. They just fought, thought she was going to use that platform as a stage, and she probably wasn't going to do that. I feel bad for her. We'll never know. You stay home. You're going to get your degree. She. This is her only time that she's going to be able to stand up and talk. <laughs> but guys, don't go anywhere. We got so much coming up. We got Unfiltered with an amazing guest, but we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. It's time for Unfiltered. And my guest, Mr. King Hoodie, I think he just likes to be called King. No, but really, he's a American recording artist, label owner, actor, model, songwriter, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and the next mogul to hit the music scene. Welcome to the show. No other than Mr. King Hoodie. Thank you. Appreciate you, appreciate Your you. Your hair's longer than mine. Thank you so much. Oh, no. <laughs> is it? Nah. No, yes. Anytime I see the man, your hair's like, what are you using in it? Nothing. It looks like it has berries and tropical stuff. The organic stuff from coming to yeah. America, fruits and berries. You and you giving me coming to America. I'm giving it to you right now? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh my God. Thank you for coming all the way here. Absolutely. I appreciate you. 
Thank you. I was reading over a lot of your stuff and getting to know who you are, but I want you to tell my audience, because when I thought about your story, tell me who King Hoodie was as a little, little guy. Introduce me to Little Hoodie. Little Hoodie? Little Hoodie. Little Hoodie, that's so interesting. Well, I'm born and raised in Miami. Okay. Like, born and raised in North Miami Beach, to be exact. Okay. Um, struggles, to be honest with you. I'm Haitian and Puerto Rican. My father's Haitian, my mother's Puerto Rican. Okay. And then I, I came out looking some kind of Indian somehow, like some kind of Native American or some tribal. Right. right. Yeah. People, yeah, you, know, you got a real exotic look to you. Right. Thank okay. You. And I don't, you know, it was just tough though. My child was very tall, I'll be honest with you. Like, we grew up like with mm -hmm. not a lot of money whatsoever. You know, I tell the story sometimes, like when I go live or when I tell people my story, like we, we lived in abandoned buildings when I was smaller, just mm. struggle after struggle, waiting outside of churches and, and different places for food and clothes and stuff like that. Like it was, a, it was a very intense struggle. And a lot of people, sometimes when people say they started from the bottom, I always like to ask them like, what, which bottom are you talking about? Mm. Like, like you didn't have a car in high school or you didn't have a home in high school. Right. Like it's two different levels of that, you know? So right. it was really tough, but we got to like, as I got older, I, you know, my consciousness expanded. I'm like, okay, well I could just, I could take all that hardship and turn it into some kind of art. So, yeah. Yeah, but it was tough growing up. It, it, you know what? It, it's funny when you say it was... So give me... We're going to get back to this. Give me one thing that you could think of out of back then that was the hardest for you to get over. The hardest thing for me to get over from back then was like... Or deal with, rather. Well, I'm the only boy in a house full of girls. So I had to essentially be raised by myself. Like okay. growing up... They, my sisters could play together, but I had to kind of play with myself. I guess my parents didn't want to run the risk of me, you know, just, I guess, acting like them. Right. So it was more like they play and then you go over there. And so uh -huh. I would either sit in front of the TV or I would just live in my own world. I had to create like a fantasy world for myself. So it, it, it caused me to be very shy and very reserved. Mm -hmm. So when I would go to school, I, would, I didn't have social skills, people skills. So I got picked on a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I tell the story sometimes where it's like, one day when I was in middle school, I was walking down the street and kids already knew that I was like real reserved to myself. This one kid punched me, boom, just because he could and just because I think there was a girl around he wanted to impress. And so my mm -hmm. face is swollen, I'm crying, I'm just walking home now. One of my friends put up on me with a bike. He's like, yo, bro, mm -hmm. we didn't like that. We're going to go beat him up, like right. come with us. Right. And I was like, no, nah, I just want to go home. When I get home, apparently the school had called home and, and told my parents like, hey, you know, he's not turning in his homework, he's not paying attention in class. Mm -hmm. And so without... Anything else, my father just, oh, you acting up at school? And so I got beat when I got home, too. Mm -hmm. And you get beat, and then I'm, I'm from a Haitian household, so you get beat, and that's the beginning of the punishment. Then I got to sit on my knees, face the wall, until I pass out, or until dinner comes around. Mm. And I remember that being one of the hardest days of my life, just in middle school. Like, oh, I'm getting beat up over here, and I'm getting beat up over here, and I can't tell the school what's happening at home. I can't tell the home what's happening at school. Right. So it causes you to, like, implode, kind of, you know? And all of that now is in your music. Because when I hear it, and, and we're going to play a 30-second clip of it, but when I hear your music, I can hear the passion. Mm. I can hear the grit. Um, we definitely have a 30-second uh, clip of one of your latest videos. Guys, take right. a listen to this. You'll love it. <laughs> Stuck in a dream, stuck in a party, that's not what it seems. Stuck in a part of Miami, that seems to be everything nobody wanted to be. Cause it ain't easy, stuck in between. Go do what I want and start wanting what other folks wanted for me. I hope you can see. If you was in a life, then I'm mad at If you do not like who you see. Okay, so now my audience can understand why I asked the question. Cause you have to understand where somebody's coming from to really understand where they're going. And this is amazing. Congratulations on it, by Thank the you. way. So what inspires your music process, your creativity? Like, where does that, I know where it comes from as far as your lyrics, but where does the rest of it come from? I want to change the world, you know? Okay. I feel like I can change the world. I, I, don't, I can't understand how people walk around this world thinking that they can't change the world, mm -hmm. you know? Because to me, it's, it's like a simple thing to do. Like, you just do it. Right. You know? So I feel like... My inspiration comes from the desire to change the world. Like to me, it's a simple thing. It's an easy thing. I can understand somebody like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs mm -hmm. and these people. I understand they woke up and they said, yo, I see things that aren't working as well as they could work. So let me just put my hands to it and change it. And so my method is music and entertainment, but that's, that's the desire. So every day I wake up and I write a song, it's like, yo, I want to 
change this thing. I want to see it different because it's a lot of things that could just be fixed, and that's what I want. And you've actually made yourself be the solution to a lot of problems. So in your, you have an indie record label, House of Pain, also AKA Hope. Mm -hmm. Hope. Where do you find time? So you have the record label, you have the clothing brand, you mm -hmm. have the music, you're doing so much. Where do you find the time to do all of that? Where does that come from? It's difficult. I'm, it has to be. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, you just gotta make the time. You know, you right. make the time. It's just like you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure you have a million things that you're working on right now. I, I can't understand. This is probably the best set I've ever been on in my life. Thank and like you. the most professional environment. Like oh, I can't, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I can't imagine like how much hard work goes into it. You know? Right. And I feel like people who don't work hard for their things can't understand it. They look at something like, oh, that's... No, it looks it, easy. It looks it simple. Looks from afar. Yeah. But then when you actually attempt to do something for yourself, you're like, whoa, curtains, lighting, this. Oh, yeah. Staging, staffing. So we oh, just yeah. figure it out. It's very difficult, but I'm understanding how to do everything I want to do now by expanding outwards. And now I'm at a level right now where I have to delegate to people. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that. Like, I had a crushing experience last week where I had to postpone an event because I attempted to do everything myself. Can't. And it, it wasn't until the event Can't. had to get pushed that people were like, bro, I could have handled that and that and that. Tell us what you need. Yeah. So now I'm at that point right now. So I think it's important when we have people in place around us that know more than us. Mm. You never want to be the smartest person in the room. Nope. You always want to be the person that absorbs the most in the room. And that's so important. So what's really interesting, too, and I love manifestation. Mm. And I saw that you have a book. And it's called, you guys have to really go on the website and look at it. I think it's 10, 10 days. Mm, materialize. Um, materialize my top materialize, 10 Materialize, right. Mm -hmm. Where did that even come from? Because that's not your first, you have a couple books on there. Mm. So how important is manifestation to you? Is that something that you use in your everyday life? Yes, absolutely. I believe in it. Really? I believe in it. My sister told me about manifestation in like 2010 with okay. uh, The Secret. The Secret. Yeah. You, you know what? I, so I have listened to that. I've, li I've literally YouTube. It was YouTube first because mm -hmm. I missed the movie. Mm -hmm. And I researched, researched, researched. There's a couple different versions of it. Okay. I only seen one. Whatever, yeah. Whichever one my sister showed me, she's like, yo, watch this. And it's it was really like, yo, good. You can manifest whatever you want. And I attempted it and it didn't work for me. But then I ended up like finding out there's more to it. Right. I ended up finding different teachers and different stuff like that. And then I ended up practicing it in a certain kind of way to where it works for me now. Mm -hmm. I feel like I just create so many experiences. In October, I was really going through it, but then I ended up saying, you know, instead of me running outside and hustling, let mm -hmm. me like read one of these books and let me sit down, center myself, calm myself down. And then the following week, I got an opportunity to fly to Egypt for 10 days and I was in wow. Egypt. And then after that, when I came back, like two, a week later from that, a friend of mine was like, yo, we're going to Ghana, come. And so I flew to Ghana right. and I got to experience two different countries in one month. That's just so awesome. Just getting my mind right. And, and I wasn't like mentally or emotionally there. But right. I told myself instead of like, running outside and doing that, let me center myself and let me start imagining a situation that I want. And then I, everything I wanted, I got on both of those trips and I came back and it was, life was amazing. Wow, so what are you working on now? Like what is, what's next for you? Projects and shows. I have, a, I have a live concert in Miami, May 31st. I'm coming. Come, please do. But mm -hmm. you should also come to this. Uh, I haven't set a date for this, but we're gonna do like a live in-studio taping of a performance, kind of like, Tiny desk, uh, unplugged type experience. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I really want you to come to that one because that's going to be a more intimate setting. I'm, I'm, I am sing it too. No, I'm sorry. I'm not going to sing. I, that's just a running joke. That's yeah. just a running joke for everybody that knows me. Are you going to sing at the, at the event? I'm going to sing in my head. Okay. I'm singing my head. We're okay. going to do this together because, you know, I identify. <laughs> I do. I identify with you because I was bullied when I first moved to the U.S. So I was thrown in the garbage can. And I do think I could sing. Mm. I definitely do. But I can't sing. I'm messing with you. Really? I'm, yeah, I'm messing with you. Don't listen to me. But you know what? We're going to shift gears a little bit. <laughs> so, you know, NLE Chopper. Yeah. I really want to see what you think. I know we don't have a lot of time. Mm. Can we play this really, really quick? We're going to be quick My about this. Is I'm with it. Bring it fun back to music. You feel me? So when you see me doing whatever, that don't mean I'm less of a nigga whoop your ass. I'm less of a nigga shoot you. That don't mean I'm less of that type, man, because I ain't going to lie, that, that part of me is hidden somewhere as well. But that can come out. But you feel me? Why do we got to bring that out when we know that these these things lead to two places? Ain't this enough niggas dying now? It's enough niggas going to jail? Y'all always want to be gangsters and then I... I 
So he's talking about the rolling out performance in which he has a song, you know, loving on himself and he having a good time and people want to label him. How do you feel now about the music industry and young black men actually loving themselves out loud? I'll Take just, us out on it. I'll start by saying this. I like him a lot. You Me know, too. I, I haven't dove completely in his music, but I know he's on Holistic Healing, Dr. Sebi and like High Vibrations. Like he got a real good head on his shoulder. So I know that the approach that he's giving to the people right now is really like, yo, it's y'all, y'all, y'all turn, turn this into something that it mm -hmm. really isn't. Like right now, I was thinking about this earlier today. I had a banana and I'm like, publicly, I can't eat a banana the regular way no more. Apparently I'm supposed to break it up into pieces with my hands and then That's so true. feed it in a weird kind of way. And I'm like, bro, y'all take this too seriously, bro. Like it's not that serious. Really? Or somebody's lifestyle don't got nothing to do with what it is that they're doing. Like. You can't, you can't hug, you can't kiss. Nah, just don't bro. do the bus, Justin Bieber hug. I don't know that's, what that's about. Just, that yeah. was a whole saw, different, I I yeah, that's I a different get. situation. <laughs> but guys, <laughs> thank you for being here. I appreciate you. I got to have you thank back. You so guys, much. thank you for tuning in. Our show goes so fast, but that's it for today. Same time, same place tomorrow. See ya.